For centuries, humanity has asked this question, but few have lived to share the answer. This is not a story I ever expected to tell. Three minutes, that's all it took. Three minutes for everything to change. I was judged, not by men, not by fate, but by something far greater, a presence beyond comprehension, a voice that echoed with the power of creation itself. And what it told me, well, let's just say I'm not the same person I was before I died. This is my story. Life events preceding the experience. Three years of marriage, no children, but the wife was pregnant at the time of the experience. I didn't realize it till after the event. We had split up. She dumped me after discovering my sexual promiscuity. I smoked marijuana on a regular basis, drank a little beer, and mostly avoided hard drugs and prescription medicines. The exception was the night I took LSD. I was out with a friend on the night of August 24th, 1983, just drifting around and getting high. This guy had been trying to convince me to use LSD with him for years, but I'd always refused. I answered yes that night because my life was slipping downward and I believed I had very little to lose. I had no employment and my wife had left me after discovering my sexual indiscretion. I was already high from marijuana use. The effects of the LSD began to take effect after 20 minutes. I saw streaks and hues while striving to maintain my sense of reality. After a few hours, I began to hear voices and see the life energy in the trees as I drove by. The life energies in the trees appeared to be in pain and I could sense their groans and pains. I eventually began hearing voices that seemed to revolve around my friend and I had the impression that he had entirely surrendered to their power. I grew concerned that I would die and demanded that he take me home. He eventually agreed to take me home after some initial opposition. I hadn't been home long when I became aware of this sound in my ears. It began as a high-pitched sound, the sound of silence or the sound a person hears with tinnitus. The sound began to descend an octave. At a particular octave, I became aware of a specific vibration in everything around me. The vibration appeared to be the same rate as the sound, but in the opposite direction. The vibratory rate increased as the sound level decreased. I instantly felt the need to lie down as this was happening. As a result, I sat down on the couch. I recall thinking I'd just attempt to sleep this off. I recall glancing up at the ceiling after lying down on the couch. The sound level dropped and the vibratory rate increased. I started noticing deformed crosses. The ends of the crosses shook a little. These crosses covered the entire surface of the ceiling. I happened to turn my head a little to glance down at the clock on top of my TV. It was approximately 11 p.m., give or take a few minutes. I stopped looking up at the ceiling. A pale yellow screen began to fill my field of vision, and I felt something grip me as if to secure me. This seizing has such an influence over my body that my arms began to move outwards in a cross formation with my body. And then it happened. The yellow light became brighter as the vibratory rate increased and the sound reached the vortex of the light. Then there was a flash of light that went from yellow to white. The flash appeared to have occurred between my eyes, in the center of my forehead. Then I wasn't in my body anymore. I was entirely enveloped in darkness. The darkness was heavy, almost intangible. However, as I began to assess myself, I discovered that I lacked a physique. Nonetheless, they were aware of my existence. I recall feeling at calm despite being surrounded and suspended in one place by darkness. I never saw my actual body again after leaving it, nor did I float towards the room's ceiling. After a few moments of settling into my newfound state, I was suddenly pulled up by two entities, one on each side, despite the fact that I couldn't see them. These aliens never appeared, but I knew they were there. They took me out of the darkness and into what appeared to be a spherical. When I noticed this cable of various lights flashing in and out of my area of vision, this wire appeared to be attached to me, but I was traveling outside of it and with it till I reached my destination. 
when I came to a halt, my entire life's history flashed before my eyes. Every idea, every emotion, and every action raced across my mind. It gave me the impression that I was ready to exit this planet. After this brief experience, I looked away and saw a gigantic ball of fire, a light that beckoned me to come closer. I recall feeling compelled to enter that light. At this point, I began to hear angelic voices saying, Let go. Let go. I did, or, at a minimum, indicated my desire for them to let go of me. I instantly began moving in a horizontal direction at a breakneck pace. I was heading straight for the light. I found that as I came closer to the light, pieces of myself began to evacuate. This encounter reminded me of the scriptural refiner's fire concept. However, as I came closer to the light, despite the fact that I wanted to go all the way, I began to feel unworthy of entering it. I came to a complete stop, my gaze fixed on the light. I never saw a being, only a light. A thunderous voice addressed me at this point. It wasn't in English as we know it, but I was spoken to through mind transference. The voice informed me that he had been watching me, that he was dissatisfied with my life, and that I needed to get my life in order because he had a plan, a purpose for me to accomplish. That was the end of the voice speaking to me. I recall feeling the love flowing from the light. I was filled with amazement, but not with fear or guilt. I sensed two creatures take me from my suspended state in front of the light. They carried me up this time. Instead of looking forward to see where I was heading, I kept my gaze fixated on the light as it rushed away from me. As I was walking away, I happened to notice something unusual. What I observed was slightly to my right. It was a massive ball of light. A wide gap of blackness lay horizontally and to my slight left in what appeared to be the direction I actually came from. The emptiness was linked to two arms with fire tongues emanating from the right and left. The fire moved in a circular motion from the light sphere. The tongues faded in brightness as they got closer to the gulf of darkness on the opposite side of the circular plane. In those moments, it appeared to me that all of creation was enclosed within these circles of fire. But I honestly don't know. I am sure there were stars and other star systems trapped within those rings of fire. After taking in everything I could, I switched my gaze to the direction I was moving while being carried by two beings I couldn't see. They were reassuring me. They were probably prepping me for what was about to come. Then I noticed a very thin mist that appeared to be a translucent white and black. The two entities carefully carried me through the curtain. I recall feeling the veal glide across my face. I knew everything once I broke through. Let me repeat myself. I knew everything. It was just for a few seconds, yet the effects of understanding began to fill my being. I abruptly passed through another veal. I regained control of my body and sat up on the couch. The time on the television was the first thing I noticed. It read roughly 1 a.m., with the second hand slowly drifting backwards to a halt. The second hand then moved ahead once again. I got up from the couch, rather perplexed as to when I popped out. I went to the kitchen, checked the calendar, and returned to the living room, satisfied that everything was in order. My consciousness was filled with genuine bliss. In terms of weight, I felt incredibly light. I had the impression that all I needed to do was issue the command and I'd float to the ceiling. But I also understood that wasn't what I was intended to do. When I was in the domain of knowledge, I was given my future and the reason why the light had returned me back to my body. When I returned, this knowledge had vanished leaving no trace of the event. However, I was left with strong thoughts that I needed to continue with my purpose, whatever it was. I was left with an insatiable desire to notify everyone in the globe. I began to imagine the consequences of doing so, how I could be mocked, if not scorned, for recounting the incident. Did this truly happen to me? 
was this experience from God? Did I have an actual vision from God? Why? Is there more? I could feel myself being seduced by doubt and anxiety. My resolution by the end of the night. I know I had a vision from God. I knew it and I knew God knew it as well. That's all that matters. I had been pacing the living room floor for several hours when I began to feel really weak at 5 a.m. My body was yearning for sleep. I dozed off on the couch and awoke at 10 a.m. I felt revitalized and energized. I could still feel a spiritual presence on me. This influence faded over a period of many days. As people went by, I could hear their thoughts and sense their emotions. Despite feeling turmoil in certain souls, I felt things were going well. My investigation into the truth has begun.